Good evening. Welcome, everyone, to our webinar on Affirmations for Self-Healing. This is a beautiful book by Swami Kriyanandaji with a different topic, attitude, quality for every week of the year. And this week's quality that we'll be sharing and doing the affirmation with is on humor. But let's begin with a prayer. My name is Naya Swami Devarshi. I'm here with Brahmachari Premdas, and we'll be sharing with you for the next half hour. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswarji, Beloved Guru, Paramahansa Yoganandaji, beloved guide Swami Kriyanandaji, we bow to all of you. Divine Mother, help us to feel within our hearts your divine bliss and freedom. Help us to see that divine joy in everything around us, in all that happens to us, in every experience in life. May we feel your joy, whether as laughter and humor, or as this deeper octave of divine bliss. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Again, from Affirmations for Self-Healing, this week's topic, humor. And Swami Kriyanandaji writes, a good sense of humor is an effective means of keeping a sense of perspective through the trials and difficulties of life. By not taking things too seriously, one develops non-attachment. One should not laugh too much, however, lest the mind become light and one's view of life superficial. Thus, one needs to achieve a sense of perspective where humor itself is concerned. The best way to do so is to share one's laughter with God, to laugh with the sense of his joy within. Never laugh at people, but rather with them. For humor should be kindly, not sarcastic. Laugh with pure delight, and everyone will join you in your laughter. And let's pray together, do the affirmation together. First, very loudly, commanding our full attention, you can repeat after me. In laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when, by laughing, I include myself. A little more quietly, absorbing the meaning of the words. In laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when, by laughing, I include myself. And now whispering only, in laughter I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when, by laughing, I include myself. And now mentally only deepening the absorption of this affirmation on the subconscious level. In laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when, by laughing, I include myself. And now finally, mentally again, offering up to the spiritual eye with rising aspiration, these words. 
In laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when, by laughing, I include myself. Om. And now, mentally pray. I delight in life's comedy, for it reminds me that true sanity exists in thee alone. And now Prem Das will share some thoughts on this topic and I will follow him. Good evening, friends. Good evening again to this evening session. So today's topic is humor. Yeah, it's very rare when we get such an opportunity to share all these fun stories. Then, yeah, today is like the best day for it. And uh, like, uh, as you all remember, Master Param Yogananda Ji used to tell life is for two things like education and entertainment. So now, and he also continues to say that statement, something similar to this, that very few people get educated nor do they get entertained. So in a way, sometimes we miss the point why we have come to this. If you think of it as like a school place where we need to learn our lessons and graduate, then we'll also keep that light, lightness of ourselves where we also learn things. At the same time, we get entertained and not take things too seriously when they don't go, when they don't go as, as we all desire it to go or want it to go. And at the same time, all these saints and all these uh, masters, they all have this quality of humor, joy, and even I've heard many talks of Swami Kriyananda Ji, reading P.G. Woodhouse when all the people, all the Guru Bhais are all laughing aloud. And at the same time, there's also one more thing that they're also serious when it comes to topics like discipleship or God. And there is, there is space for everything here. It's not one or other. It's like a, there's this balance again, as in life, everything. So, for example, uh, there's also this quote where you might have heard already, but softer than a flower when kindness is concerned and stronger than, a than the thunder when principles are at stake. Softer than a flower when kindness is concerned and stronger than a thunder when principles are at stake. In same way, so there is a space for everything. So today's topic is humor. Now today, um, I just remembered one uh, this thing, one short one-liner sort of story, which Mash, which I think Mash used to repeat or he used to laugh when hearing about this. So something, it goes like this. That particular woman has this, uh, he's referring to a woman there and uh, he refers to her teeth. Her teeth are like stars, they come out at night. Her teeth are like stars, they come out at night. So this one was so funny and uh, now, other than this, let me, let me remember. Okay, this is one more uh, small story I would like to share now. This was uh, shared by Badri in Ananda Village. I was recently seeing his YouTube video. And uh, so in this case, the scenario is uh, immigration seat in US. And there is this Irish woman who has just landed or now she's passing through the immigration and she hands over her bag to the police officer where the police officer checks for all the items which are legal, which are not illegal, or which are legal and which are illegal. Yeah. So, and he takes her back and he sees there's a flask. So he asks the woman, so ma'am, what is in the flask? And she replies, water. And uh, so he opens the cap of it and he smells it. Irish whiskey, he says. And suddenly, spontaneously, this woman says, glory to God, glory to God. This is a miracle. This is a miracle. God has done a miracle. He has turned water to Irish whiskey. And thus ends the small tale. But again, what was more interesting about what, uh, well, Badri was sharing the story was that he said, uh, like, we need to include God in everything. So this woman, though it seems like too far off, in a way, in her attunement, but she, she included God and she said she was trying to include God even in her small uh, 
mischief she was trying to create there. Now, more on the topic of humor. So I heard Swami Kriyandarji share this incident where at one point he and his brother disciple were helping master with a project. So they had to like, uh, he gave them some two by four and he asked them to like level the ground. They had already worked almost the whole, uh, this thing afternoon and they were ready for their lunch. But now master, since master asked them, they started doing one. Then by the time they finished one, master said, why don't you go there and do it? And they started doing it. And by this time, their bodily, they were exhausted. So they, at, this was like a breaking point for them. Then suddenly one more place. And suddenly at this point, when Swamiji was doing, he just stood up and he started laughing. And he said, he started laughing and that just conveyed. And master looked at him, smiled and he said, okay, I was just playing with you. Please now go and have lunch. And Swamiji, while narrating this incident, what I understood was he was trying to convey this. Uh, Guru, all our masters, God tests us, tests his disciples to the breaking point many times. And then uh, the result of the test is that after the breaking point, do you come out victorious or not? How do you, how do you know if you come out successful or not? The defining factor is if you come out with a grudging attitude or like uh, all these moods or you come out with laughter. So in this case, Swamiji was full of laughter and he just said to Master Divine Mother, so what do you want me to do? In the same way, whenever we, we all get, get to face these situations where the breaking point comes, then we all have to remember the small incident which Swamiji shared and we all have to laugh and tell to Divine Mother what a play this is, like in the reading. I think in the prayer it goes something like, except this world, everything, everything in this world is seems like insanity, something on those lines. Okay, so I have a few more minutes and uh, okay, now I'm going to share with you something I read in a newspaper. Okay, this is one of my favorites. So I thought this might be the best opportunity to share with you this small story. So in this uh, incident, a woman, has gone to a medical store. The topic of this uh, small story is when God sends help, don't ask questions. So in this, the woman has gone to a medical store. She has parked her car, gone there. She has picked up. Her husband is not feeling well. She's very sick. So she, she picks up a few things. Now she goes near the car and then she sees that she, the car has got locked and she has left the car keys inside. Okay, now this is like a very important time where she has to get quickly and she believes in God and she just prays to God, God, please send me help. And But she's not giving up there. She finds a hanger there. She's trying to do something so that she gets there on time. And then suddenly this uh, a person on some bike, like some Ayabuza or what do you call Harley Davidson just stop, starts coming in that direction. And he just stops there and he walks, he's full bearded, he's a huge man. And he starts walking to her and he says, uh, do you need any help? And she says, yes, please. And she explains the situation and he doesn't take much time and he just goes there. He opens the car for her and he walks back and she's like, she's all happy. She hugs this person. She says, thank you so much. You're saving my husband's life and you're such a nice man. She prays to God. and." Uh, well, this person was almost going back now. He hears this. You're a very nice man. So he goes back and he tries to correct her. See, lady, I'm not a nice man. I'm just coming out of the prison. I was there for car theft. So I was stealing cars. So I was, I'm coming back from prison. So don't think I'm a nice man. And then see the attitude of this person. Guess what happened on the woman's reaction? She hugged this person again. And she said, oh God, you have sent me a professional this time. So in life, every time, if you just try to remember that humor element, even when, the, when a person with your right attitude, I think you can change the whole situation, hell to a heaven is what I was trying to convey. And uh, now I'll request Devarshi ji to share now. Please let me know if our internet connection is 
breaking up too much for you, you can put a comment in the chat and we are doing our best. So what does humor have to do with the spiritual path? It's just very interesting because Swami Kriyanandaji talked about these different aspects of God, but one of them is divine bliss, divine joy. And he said, really, God is feeling, and that feeling is satchitanandam, divine bliss or divine joy. And what does humor have to do with that? Well, when we read Paramahansa Yoganandaji's poem, Samadhi, which really describes the experience of cosmic consciousness and what it means and the power of it. But the last two lines in that poem are interesting. They are, I, a tiny bubble of laughter, have become the sea of mirth itself. I, a tiny bubble of laughter, have become the sea of mirth itself. They're two very important lines, so much so that I was listening to a recording of Yogananda once. And he said, repeat after me, I, a tiny bubble of laughter, have become the sea of mirth itself. And he kept repeating it over and over and over again and had the, the people in the audience during this talk repeat it with him. And it's a very good reminder that the spiritual path, if we don't get to divine joy by being heavy and serious, we also don't get there by being too lighthearted as the reading here just really makes clear. We also have to have some seriousness and also as Prem Das uh, shared with us, but we get there in steps. And before we reach divine bliss, we do find it very helpful to see the lightness, the, the simple joy, even if it's not divine bliss and samadhi bliss, final union with our true selves as divine joy. But on the way there, we find it helpful just to see the joy in all circumstances. And yes, life can be very serious at times. It can be really serious. It can be very heavy. We can experience pain and grief. But I have found it helpful at times, especially during times of intense physical pain, because I've had to deal with some pretty intense chronic physical pain at times in my life. I have found that at any time, once you start meditating and once you develop the habit of meditation, of getting still and tuning into divine joy, I have found that it's almost like a skill that you develop that comes from meditation regularly every day during the easy times when you're not experiencing intense pain or intense grief or, or the loss of a loved one or fear or anxiety. But if you meditate regularly morning and evening, it starts to develop the skill, almost like an ability but it's really an innate ability. It's just really something that we've forgotten how to do. But you learn how to get still during any moment of intensity and just listen or feel that feeling in the heart of the first glimmerings of joy, the, the tiny bubble of laughter. You, you can really feel that if you really listen and feel it because it's there all the time. It's, it's really we're made of that divine bliss, of divine joy. We were created from that. We just forgot. And so you will find that if you just listen and tune in quietly and feel, because when, when Swamiji said God is feeling, and that feeling is divine bliss, satchitanandam, it's very important to remember that, that this God is not an idea. It's not a philosophy. It's not something you figure out by reading the book. Yeah, this is God. Now I got it. It's not going to be in the mind. It's going to be in the heart. And it is that aspect of feeling that comes from the perception from the heart rather than from the head. And if you get still enough, and I would recommend doing this as a practice every day when you meditate morning and evening, is at some point after all the techniques and after you've done everything, try to listen and feel just a warm, pleasant, joyful, mirthful sensation there in the heart. It's there if you just listen properly and sensitively. And so practice that regularly and you will find that then during the difficult times, it's not far away, you know how to access it. 
This was the beauty of seeing Swami Kriyanandaji. When I first met him, this is like over 40 years ago, I didn't know what a saint was supposed to be like. I had read autobiography of a yogi, but I had hardly met any yogis in my life. I had met a few. But then when I met Swami Kriyananda, I was surprised because he was so joyful and exuberant and he had so much energy and enthusiasm. I was a little bit surprised at first, but it was just over time I saw that his joy came from deep inside. And yeah, he would laugh uproariously at times as Prem Das shared, he would read P.G. Woodhouse to us at Ananda Village. He would read one of those stories of Jeeves or Mr. Moliner, and he would be laughing so hard that he could hardly even read because the, the story was so funny. But it came from deep inside. If you looked into his eyes, he wasn't totally losing it in laughter the way some people do. He was just expressing something that came from within. And when that divine joy is overflowing, as it was with him, it comes out as laughter, it comes out as humor, it comes out as joy. And you'll see this. I have seen that the people in my life who I admire the most on the spiritual path tend to have a lot of this joy in a very infectious way, in a lot of humor, and just in simple ways. And just, you know, going through the day. They don't have to sit around and tell joy all along to make you laugh. They, yeah, they can do that just it comes from within seeing the the simple in, insanities of life because you know life can get pretty insane sometimes and it can drive us crazy or it can drive us to laughter i was once speaking with a brother disciple of swami kriyananda he was a brother monk when swamiji was a monk in srf and he was with swamiji since you know from a long long time ago until swamiji left that organization. And he once told me quietly, he said, you know, when Kriyananda was here, laughter rocked the halls. And he was talking about that infectious, joyful laughter that he had, but it did come from deep within. And so remember that this divine joy is not separate from humor, laughter. Now it can, laughter can become too outward as this reading described. But when we really tune into divine joy within, you'll find that life becomes more and more joyful over time. And Swami Kriyananda once quoted a, a, a Christian saint who once said that a sad saint is a sad saint indeed. Basically saying that a saint who's dour and sad and heavy is a sad saint, not just, you know, is a, is a bad saint, I guess is what he was saying, and not really too saintly. Yeah, there are times in life when things get intense and we have to be really serious and stern with ourselves. But keep coming back to this divine joy within and you will find over time that that divine joy gives you a real inner strength and a lightness and a real freedom and non-attachment and a detachment from the craziness of this world. Again, as Swamiji described in this reading, in which Prem Das will, will read again in a moment. So again, repeat those last lines of the poem Samadhi as Yoganandaji urged in this talk of his. Tiny bubble of laughter have become the sea of mirth itself. I, a tiny bubble of laughter, have become the sea of mirth itself. And you will find that if you tune into the, the little glimmerings of joy, in the heart, which come first as tiny sort of bubbles of laughter coming up. And if you tune into that and encourage it and feed it and listen to it, that over time it grows and expands and becomes more and more this divine cosmic joy. So the two are very closely related. They are sort of on a continuum in a way. And if we can feed the, the little bubbles of laughter inwardly again, not just in an outward you know, restless way, but you will find that this is a way to find God in each moment is that listening and that tuning in to those first glimmerings of divine joy. So may this week as you practice this affirmation be filled with joy, humor, the humor of life, but also with deep, deep divine joy. And from us again, we'll do the reading 
and then we'll do the affirmation more in depth again. Thank you, Devashiji. That's very nice. So I'll just do the reading again and then we'll do affirmation and prayer. A good sense of humor is an effective means of keeping a sense of perspective through the trials and difficulties of life. By not taking things too seriously, one develops non-attachment. One should not laugh too much, however, lest the mind become light and one's view of life superficial. Thus, one needs to achieve a sense of perspective where humor itself is concerned. The best way to do so is to share one's laughter with God, to laugh with the sense of his joy within. Never laugh at people, but rather with them, for humor should be kindly, not sarcastic. Laugh with pure delight and everyone will join you in laughter. Please now repeat along with me as I do the affirmation first in a loud voice. In laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when by laughing I include myself. Once again, in a loud voice. In laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when by laughing I include myself. Now in a normal voice, in laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when by laughing, I include myself. Once again in normal voice, please repeat, in laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when by laughing I include myself. Now doing it in a whisper. In laughter I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when by laughing I include myself. Once again, in whisper, in laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when by laughing, I include myself. This time, taking it deep into subconsciousness, repeat mentally along with me. In laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when by laughing I include myself. Once again, in laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when by laughing include myself. This time offering it at the spiritual eye. Please repeat mentally again, mentally along with me. In laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when by laughing, I include myself. I in laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when by laughing, I include myself. In laughter, I recall my own mistakes. Merriest am I when by laughing, I include myself. Now please repeat mentally the prayer along with me. I delight in life's comedy, for it reminds me 
the true sanity exists in thee alone. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. And uh, we'll again meet again next week with one more affirmation. Thank you all. We'll see you again. Good evening.